Hi, I'm Jesse Jeffrey Dem Ravinelli, and I'm at the Berlinale with my second feature film, So Pretty. When did you learn how to make coffee? Um, a very special person taught me very recently. <laughs> Would you like some milk? Sure. Right, one sec. I'm surprised you even have milk. I know, <laughs> it's my roommates, but I don't think they mind. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Last time I checked, you were lactose. <laughs> yeah, this is almond milk, but. It's the healthy kind. <laughs> the expensive kind. The expensive kind. <laughs> I can't keep up this lifestyle and my budget. Speaking of. Tell me. I've been just hanging out, looking for a new job, slowly. Oh. Sure. Well, where have you been looking? Mm, I've been posting about it. Hey. We could call the person Paul kisses Erica. Perhaps we could call them Bruno or Fritz. Since Fritz is very hard to differentiate from Franz, we'll call them Bruno. The name really doesn't fit them at all. Like we said, Erica fits better. Hi, welcome to the 33rd Teddy Award. I'm Jean-Bert Bobak, and I'm here with Jesse Jeffrey Dan Robinelli to discuss the movie So Pretty. Hi, welcome to the festival. Thank you. Um, so the movie is based on Zotian, which is a novel by Ronald M. Cherniaku. Um, what drew you to this material? Uh, I came across it pretty much by chance, like a few years ago when I was staying in Berlin with a partner, and he had heard it being read, and he said, you know, I didn't understand this book that well, but it seemed like something that would be an interest of you. And I, you know, was roughly fluent in German and was interested in reading more books, so I just, I just read it on a whim. I bought it and I read it. Um, and I kept returning to it over the years. But So my initial interest in this book was purely I liked the book. Uh, and so starting a second film, I was reaching around, I was thinking about making a short film that just did like one scene from this, from this book. And I was speaking with a, a friend of mine and she was, was very directly said, this is your next right. feature, you need to do this. And then so once you begin making the film, then all of these questions of adaptation and translation and transposition, these yeah. came up These came up afterwards. So the beginning was a very pure, I like this novel, and it had yeah. become very important to me. It was something that I kept turning yeah. to over the last few years and through various like personal struggles in my own right. life. But then you make the film and you start externalizing these, these, mm -hmm. these questions and bringing them into an aesthetic yeah. relationship. Yeah, can you talk a bit about this, this process that, that you went through with with working this material yeah. because it's an interesting question of adaptation in it. Is it, to what extent is it an adaptation? If it's not really an adaptation, what is it then? Um, yeah. And yeah, these sort of questions came to the surface. Yeah, I mean, so originally it was like, again, sort of very pure instinct. I want to translate it. I wanted yeah. friends in New York to be able to read this book and they right. couldn't because it's not in English. And so this became, you know, sort of very simple way to do that. But when you're making it from somewhere very else, I, mean, I don't share the history that the book shares. The book is very personal for its own author. And so you start bringing up these questions. So the film does more or less follow the trajectory of the novel, but it contains these various changes that either I felt were hinted at in the novel that I could bring mm -hmm. out and change with this decade and, and country change, or just interventions that I made through, you know, maybe an initial misreading, like I mistranslated something, and then you go back, but you kind of like your misreading, and so you keep that in there. Uh -huh. So evolving this sort of dialogue with this author who cannot be the same as me. Yeah. Um, and so to, re to in embrace this difference and also this shared space. So it becomes like a talking through and a talking to the novel, what yeah. you see on screen. But at the same time, it's a very simple story. So trying to right. figure out how to do this translation so that it was something that resembled what it was coming yeah. from, where it was still maintaining this difference of time, yeah. space, histories, right. and identities. Yeah. There is an interesting transposition of Berlin and New York City in uh, in the movie, of course, the novel was written in the 1980s, so there is, of course, a time difference as well uh, regarding that. But uh, I was just wondering what excited you about kind of transposing these two, two realities? I mean, there is a lot of, I think, you know, there is commonalities between these, these youth cultures, right. these youth political cultures. Um, for me, what was interesting about the novel is it's, it's all external, it's, it's descriptions of gestures, of posture, of movements, 
And there was something about this that felt very, very contemporary. This emphasis on the performative and the externalized is something mm -hmm. like legitimate as a way to to build uh, discussion and dialogue and community yeah. through these externalized things without invalidating that in any way. So I think that what was really was exciting to me because I was you know in a in a milieu in New York where identity and subjectivity and internalization was, was so formatted in the discourse, even though, of course, you had all these, yeah. these other ways of communicating going on. And so that felt like a very fresh way forward for my own thinking that felt liberating um, right. and, and suggested a way to make a film. I yeah. mean, it just really, it yeah, synced yeah. with my own ways of making mm -hmm. films, but also just sort of suggested a new way to like approach these questions of identity yeah. and, and, and organizing yeah. that, I, that did feel somewhat stymied, especially as things you know, got hectic in the last couple yeah. of years in the United States. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I wanted to ask about that uh, because the film gains a certain sense of urgency because of yeah, these things yeah. with, the, with all the right-wing populism yeah, on the yeah. rise across the entire yeah. globe, basically. I mean, I think it's important to note that the film was originally, uh, like, the very rough treatment was sketched out under Obama, so I don't think okay. that the film can't exist, you know, without the current yeah, administration, definitely. the current milieu. Um, but of course it does add a certain tension. And so it's also a working through of that, of like, this was written under Obama, but you know, these tensions are still there. So just trying to work through um, when a way forward seems stymied politically, like what sorts of um, affordances and affinities are there that we can that yeah. we can capitalize on. So, you know, it doesn't, you know, I'm sure you'll notice watching the film, it does yeah. not reference any of yeah, the... No, not at all. And I'm not interested in that. I think yeah. to do so reduces the scope of the film and reduces the scope of our ability yeah. to imagine other futures. So it was a film about, like, trying to imagine other futures now. Yeah. Um, for, and, for bodies yeah. like mine and, and mm -hmm. bodies that are, yeah. have similar... Or, and, but also for people in general, this sort of, like, right. ways of coming together. Yeah, and I think imagination is sort of a a key word here because yeah. that really takes a central role in, in the movie as well and, and the political potential of imagination. So what, what is your, your view yeah, on that? Yeah, it was difficult for me. I am not by nature a very um, optimistic person, but I have become much more of one uh, perhaps in the last two years. Um, I think partially because this making this project forced me to. Mm. Um, so forcing myself to take this leap of imagination and to put a sort of very naive um, faith in the people around me and my collaborators in the, in the possibilities of other ways of relating between bodies, um, it's, it's been huge. I mean, in, in my own personal life, it's been something that yeah. has rescued me in many ways. So, so yeah, I just the film tries to continue that process, the difficulty of imagining. I, you know, I was describing this to when we were sort of coming up with the, the shot list and things. It's like, yeah. I described it as like, I'm trying to imagine the contours of a world that I will never see. So you won't be able to know what it looks like, but you might be able to send a camera around a corner and catch a glimpse of what it might, yeah. just the outline of what it might look like. And so this film is kind of yeah. moving a camera in the hopes of doing that. Yeah. And also the film sort of blurs boundaries between fiction and documentary. Yeah, I mean, let, let my, my first film did this like quite self-consciously, mm -hmm. um, a documentary called Empathy. Um, this new one, I think originally when it had begun, I had made this very intentional, this sort of yeah. documentary fiction. But then as I moved on, I felt like foregrounding that was ultimately uninteresting. It was just you capture the scenes that, that are important, and sometimes that involves going out into the world in situations that you are not staging. Yeah. And sometimes that involves making, my shooting style involves making a set that's very quiet, that's very calm, uh, you're not allowed to yell, <laughs> and just sort of creating a, a, an environment where by the time we're rolling cameras, I don't direct pretty much at all. Okay. Um, I mean, they know what they have to do. They have, you have to do this. Right. But yeah. how is freedom? It's not improvisation. Nobody improvises. You just make a space where it's easy to do the thing that you have to do. And for me, that is in some ways very similar to taking out a camera with two actors and filming a protest. It's, yeah. You create an environment where reactions can occur. You know what they're going to be. And you just sort of let them play out. And it's perfect. And so this is a nice way to, yeah, to, move to see up. the contours of a future yeah. that doesn't exist. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and I mean, it's also interesting because you also play one of the main roles in the movie. Yeah, yeah. So this double role, or like yeah. even more than that. And that was not planned. That was just a last minute casting decision due to the schedule availability. And it, uh, so that was a shock. And that was, a, <laughs> that was not intended. But I have this tendency to sort of question myself as a director mm -hmm. in my films anyway. And so this became another opportunity to do that. And also it really pushed that sort of naive element, because I had mm. to have faith that yeah. my body on screen was something worth seeing, which 
uh, yeah. is a, a, it's a that's a scary thing for yeah. me. Um, but I, you know, it worked. It allowed me to continue yeah. that dialogue. Definitely, um, definitely. Um, it also has a a very interesting filmic texture. Uh, did you shoot on 16 millimeter? Yeah, or? the film is. Yeah. There is uh, cell phone footage and okay. uh, 16 millimeter. Yeah. The vast majority of 16 millimeter. Right. Um, and this tension between digital and film and, is something I've played with throughout my career. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So why why is it so important to you? What, what well, I always again I always have an idea early on of why I'm doing it, and then yeah. you start and the film and the digital start to pick up their own resonances. So it ended up becoming we started to realize that digital was moving towards these sort of less structured exterior spaces, mm -hmm. but then we would bring it inside sometimes. So you have this like this very pure prettiness of the 16 millimeter image, and yeah, that sort of ended up circling around certain characters and situations, and then this these mm -hmm. moments of this sort of more uh, jerky, uncomfortable, too present yeah. uh, cell phone footage goes out there, and then this just gives you poles to play with, and then you, maybe you blur them. Yeah. At the end, we ended up making all the cell phone footage smooth, to just go very smoothly with the rest of the yeah. footage in terms of color and texture yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to sort of play down this difference. Ultimately, mm -hmm. it was about making it all sort of merge into a film canvas. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with every film, it's you're rediscovering why you're doing this. Yeah, it's, inter thing. yeah. it's interesting because it sounds like a very organic process yeah. in a way, which is like... It's all very controlled. Out. Like, I make rules for myself when I make a film. There are, like, the camera must move like this. Uh -huh. The shots must be like this. There's all everything is scripted out, and then you making the film is very easy. You just hit the checks that you're you expecting. Just follow. To do. But then, as you go, yeah. things change. Yeah. Um, um, what is I think very important about this film is that the political and the personal really completely just merge. Yeah. In it. Yeah. Um, so, what was it that you that really drawn you to this? That yes, this should come through this movie? Um, honestly, a lot of it came from a place of frustration and fear. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not knowing how to create safety um, yeah. and not knowing how to create uh, environments where we could do something other than spend money. Um, so yeah. those two, those two just sort of, sort of merged. Yeah. Um, because it's, you know, it's about it is a film about care. It's a very, it's, yeah, you know, it's for me again, it's a very sweet film, um, and so this had to be about caring for particular people. And so the way yeah. to imagine, I mean, not particular in general, but there are particular people in this film, and so it just became a way to to make that to make the idea of politics something that mattered and that something yeah. that felt possible. Yeah. Because that's the big the big problem with so much political organizing is that there are these imagined futures that don't exist and will never exist, and so bringing it into these five people that I really, really care about. I guess I'm including myself in those five, so let's say four. <laughs> I do care about myself. Well, that's but, important. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was just a very natural way of being able to translate this care for a general world into a care yeah. for, like, I can start here with these people, and then we can, we yeah. can move out. We can, we can um, yeah. explore yeah. further, yeah. Um, what is, I think, very beautiful and also very refreshing in the film is uh, the portrayal of uh, femme identities, queer bodies, trans bodies. Um, can you talk a bit about this? Yeah, uh, I mean, you watch you film after this. film after film where a trans woman is brutalized or spends her whole time trying yeah. to figure out, you know, what her identity is. And I was just so sick of these coming out narratives and these narratives of uh, desecration and abjection. Um, I don't know, maybe they have their place, but for me, I, you know, the best I get is like, oh, thank God, it's a girl that looks like me. Uh, and I'm not interested in a cinema that, that is, thank God, a girl that looks like me. I wanted a, a yeah. real cinema that, that was trying out new, new ways of moving a camera and new ways of uh, approaching bodies and thinking about things. So for me, it was just a desire to see a film in which people that look like the people that I spend time with were allowed to do things yeah. and were allowed to just be bodies, sleeping, fucking, yeah. dancing. You know, just, right. just, just a way to get back, to allow these bodies to be just human bodies and their yeah, particularity. Be, um, because and just be. Yeah. And then it's the only thing that excites me about these films of abjection is yeah. like that there is a body in it and that's really nice. Right. So right. <laughs> what if we do the whole film like that instead yeah. of just a yeah, few yeah, moments yeah. where she's not getting the shit kicked out of her. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I think because... I would talk, like to have my life involve something more than getting punched in the face, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> like, so. don't just reduce it to one aspect, yeah. obviously. But then, you know, when you do start approaching films from these angles, it does 
suggests you know, ways to approach even adaptation, translation. Like once you think about bodies that are given the freedom to become whatever body they want to be yeah. and to rest inside of it, then a work, a textual work, a literary work, a political history, the history of communism, the history of anarchism, the histories of these things, these also become something that can transpose, that can transist. So it did, I can't say that like sort of like trans narratives didn't play into a certain way of thinking about the film, mm -hmm. but I do want them to just be present in the film. Yeah, I hope right. the audiences will yeah, be I'm, able to I'm just sure. see them as something present. I'm, I'm sure about that. Um, it's the way how fluidity comes into play uh, within the whole movie, and we talked about many of these things, uh, the fluidity between uh, analog and digital materials, um, the fluidity in narratives, in processes of adaptation and translation. Yeah. Uh, I thought that this is a very interestingly and very prominently queer way of constructing a movie, of creating something. Yeah. Would, you, would you? Yeah, I mean, I struggle with the word well? queer, honestly. Okay. Um, I've been bringing this up recently because I do worry that queer again flattens difference, this term that was once mm -hmm. like a, something that gave a political yeah. unity to a group. Now yeah. I think this unity has become something that ultimately reduces perspectives. So mm -hmm. I don't think it is queer so much as allowing um, ideas to exist in their specificity and to then exist, move, and grow. That where you are now mm -hmm. is not where you have to end up, either as an idea, a thought, a person, a body, a gender. Yeah. Um, but that you can go somewhere. So rather than calling it queer, this like yeah. as though everything yeah. where it is is queer, yeah. is to look at like, this is a girl here who wants to make music, who wants to be with her boyfriend, yeah. who wants to find a way to care that feels somewhat different. Yeah. You know? and, and then again, you know, this is a novel by a communist in West Berlin who moved to East Berlin and looking at the history of Chernikow. And so bringing that in is a specificity that is not like my specificity, but mm -hmm. we do have commonalities. Yeah. And so taking those, those moments of connection is a place to sort of go forward. Yeah. So that is the approach to the film. Yeah, and very I think that, yeah. yeah. Which is why the camera is back. We don't go, we, we, we just allow characters to have their space to interact. You can always see when someone is crossing. It was very important yeah. that like motion across a room could be clear. Yeah. So that you would see someone starts here, they go here, they cross this person, maybe mm -hmm. they say hi. And that for me was yeah. like the way of making a film. Two parts, they cross, you see right. them cross, and they perhaps they give each other a kiss in the cheeks. You know? Yeah, that's that, uh, that's true. So. Uh, and also, I think that in a way connects with with the soundtrack, with with, yeah. with the soundscape Thank of the, of, of the film, <laughs> which is yeah. I, I thought that it was very lovely because it gave a very specific rhythm and a very specific dynamic to the film. So can you talk a bit about, about yeah. that, the sound itself? And, I think and I would have rather been a musician. I see, I see music <laughs> as something that, that works a lot quicker. You get to yeah. see the effects of bringing, of like what music does in the world very quickly mm -hmm. when you create it. Um, and so just paying attention to those oral tapestries and making a space for music to generate an environment um, felt very, very important. But each of these musics comes from a certain background, carries a certain history. And they're, and they're like fun. So again, yeah. for this was a film about embracing the fact that I like music that is pleasant to listen to, that has these sorts of propulsive rhythms, that causes bodies yeah. to move, um, yeah. that causes this sort of soaring feeling, these sort of like very basic bodily responses, to add those in a way that wasn't just underlining an existing element, but was sort of bringing its own emotional and social space yeah. into the film felt very exciting. So they don't like reinforce an emotion, but I do want them to be pleasant to listen to. Yeah, yeah, um, I mean, and it's, it's yeah. absolutely They bring their own little world with them, to. and you get to put yeah. it all together, and that's very pleasant. Yeah. So if I can't, you know, unfortunately, I didn't focus enough on the music thing, so now I'll use them, I'll just bring them in and allow them to support and buttress the film and create yeah. these spaces under, underneath it and around it. Yeah. It's very nice. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, ultimately, for me, and I might be completely wrong with that, <laughs> Uh, but for me, the film worked almost as kind of a manifesto of how to be and how to be together uh, and exploring ways of, of doing that and sort of keeping up with constantly rethinking and reimagining and, and going for it how to be together. Yeah. And, yeah, I don't I mean, want to be so bold as to call it as a manifesto. Yeah. I think again, like five years ago, I would have loved writing <laughs> manifestos, and now I'm kind of like, well, what if I disagree with it later? Uh, and it seems sort of, well, but that's just sort of, but it's certainly like, uh, it, I hope that it is a description of a way to, to do those things. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. trying to bring things down from my own thinking to like, it's a thing that exists and 
you know, but all of those things that you mentioned are, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're central concerns for me. Yeah. I think a lot of people It's my do. own process of trying to figure out how to, like, be... Yeah. Yeah, right. Fine, to be... So, yeah. Exactly. It's important yeah. to me. <laughs> and I think it's important for, for the audiences as well, and I'm, and I'm pretty sure that, like, this film will inspire a lot of people to at least think... I, that would be really nice. I would, yeah. Yeah, I would no, feel very joyful. I'm yeah. sure about it. Well, thank you so much for <laughs> being you for here with me. us. And uh, I wish you all the best for the thank festival. You. Enjoy it. And hopefully we'll see each other very soon again. Have a lovely afternoon. Yeah.